Hi, I'm Steve Clapham, and welcome to Accounting Red Flags Detection Tool Number Three: Cash Your Earnings. This is one of the most important and fundamental tests that you can do, and it's quite intricate. It's quite tricky, so I'm just going to cover this at a very high level. In the blog, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. But this is the sort of thing that we teach in much more granular detail in our courses. And it really needs to be done in some detail with examples. But let me try and give you a flavor of the sort of things that we look at. You can see on the slide that um, what I've done is I've compared Carillion's cash from operations with its earnings. And you can see that the two lines track each other quite closely and then there starts to be a divergence. And this is the sort of pattern that you want to look for. So you want to look back in time and you want to look for a pattern in which the earnings carry on going up and the cash flow starts to go down. That is a classic warning signal. And it should have been obvious in the case of Carillion where it's got a very negative collection cycle. Now, investors, analysts tend to like companies with negative collection cycles because obviously a company with a negative collection cycle, so it owes its suppliers, its trade creditors are greater than what its customers owe it, its debtors and its inventory. So it has negative working capital and its overall capital employed is reduced. And this is great if your sales are growing, but once your sales start to shrink, it becomes a real problem because that negative working capital starts to unwind. And instead of getting more cash in as your sales grow, you have to, you see cash going out as your sales shrink. That's why these businesses, these construction businesses, tend to be quite aggressive when they're bidding for new contracts because they can't afford for their revenues to fall. So the, the trick here is to compare the cash in the cash flow statement with the earnings in the income statement. And what many of the textbooks will tell you to do is to compare the net income with the cash from operations. There are two problems with that. The first problem is minorities. So net income is after the deduction of the minority's interest in subsidiaries in which there is a minority. There is no such adjustment in the cash flow. So if you're going to do the, the comparison at that level, you need to do it at the profit after tax level. I prefer to do it further up the P&L. This is a very simple, obvious problem with doing it after tax. The tax in your P&L for 2020 is a tax you actually pay the following year in 2021. You can't pay the tax man until you've worked it out. <laughs> so obviously the cash tax relates to the previous year's profits. So if you've got a fast growing business in which it's paying tax, the payment to the tax man will always be lower in the cash flow statement than in the P&L. So if you take the, the comparison at the pre-tax level, I think it's easier to do. The other thing that I take out is stock-based comp because the stock-based compensation charge in the profit and loss account is a calculation of an option value. There isn't a cash factor for this. There isn't something in the cash flow statement which corresponds with it. So stock-based comp will always depress the profits and make the cash flow look better in comparison with the reported profits. So I take that out of the picture as well, and that makes for a much more powerful and easier check.